which they had prepared, and certain others with them. Read. And they found a stone rolled away from the And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Read. And he came to us, and they were much protected thereabout. Their bones, men stood by them in shining and shining And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Verse 6, read. He is not here, but he is with them. Remember how he spake unto you to the saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Read. And they remember his words. And returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Read. It was very and there All together, and, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and, and they believed them not. It says, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. You may be seated. <laughs> Has anyone in here ever seen Martin Luther King? Anyone ever seen Martin Luther King? Anyone ever seen John F. Kelly? You seen Martin Luther King in person? One, one person. Uh, anyone ever seen John F. Kennedy in person? You seen him? Seen his face? How about Harriet Tubman? Oh, no. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. No one ever seen those people. Well, this is what the Word of God says in First John chapter five. First John chapter five, because there is a need that we have an understanding uh, of the authenticity of the gospel, how true it is, how real it is. And John says in 1 John 5 and verse 9, if we receive the witness of men, now the witness of men said, history said, that there uh, was an Abraham Lincoln, that uh, there was a Harriet Tubman, who ran the, uh, ran the Underground Railroad, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, there are various figures that uh, really impacted history. And it says, if we receive the witness of men, mm -hmm. right, right. the witness of God is great. Amen. If we receive uh, the witness, and I, I never seen Martin Luther King. We've seen him on television. Uh, 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 we have one. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sister Jane, see, see them in person. Amen. But that's what not everybody here. But you all believe <coughs> that there was an Abraham Lincoln. We all believe that there was a Harriet Tubman. We all believe that these various figures of history existed. And John says, if you can believe the witness of men, if you can believe, if you can believe the history of mankind, surely you can receive the witness of God, because the witness of God is greater. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, was the most uh, significant single event that ever happened in history. It, it, uh, 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 it did something in history. You see B.C. and A.D., mm -hmm. that, 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 that's the, the testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It says that the disciples, not only, uh, not only were they scared, they were, they were petrified. They said, well, well if, if, if they killed our king, they're thinking that we're next. And they were depressed and they were fearful until they saw Jesus face to face. And they went from being fearful and depressed and overwhelmed.
overwhelmed to being courageously confident and their hope was contagious. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the focal point of the gospel. Yes, he did die for our sins according to the scripture, but he rose the third day and, and, and it's part two that has the most significance because if he only died for our sins, but he did not rise again, if he didn't rise again the third day, then it would still mean that we would still be in our sins. The resurrection is the receipt that our sins have been paid for and we have the opportunity to be fully reconciled to God. Amen. So John says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. He that believes on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of God hath not life. But I want to go back to verse 10. He that believeth on the son of God have the witness in themselves. Yes. You know, if you're born again, there's a witness in you that you are truly born again. There's a witness. There, there's a confirmation by the Holy Spirit that you belong to God. I remember uh, before I got born again, I did it kind of backwards. I got baptized, and then later on I got saved. <laughs> and so I just got that. My brother went up, and then I went right behind him. And uh, you know, I, I, I went, I went down uh, a dry devil, and I came up a wet devil. <laughs> and years later, I got saved. Thank God, and uh, it meant something to me. But I'll never forget. Uh, it was around this time of the year. Uh, I asked my mom. I said, uh, I'm, "I'm saved, aren't I?" I said, I'm, I'm saved, right? I'm, I'm saved, right? I said, I remember getting baptized at Nazarene Baptist Church. And she said, Ken, uh, you know, honey, she said, saved people don't have to ask. I said, they don't. She said, no, baby, saved people don't go and ask other people, are they saved? I said, oh, no. <laughs> But I'll never forget that that, that moment that she said that, uh, let me know. I didn't have the witness in myself. You know, when you really get born again, the word of God says, the spirit of God, he comes into us. Amen. We all understand this, uh, that uh, when Adam uh, transgressed in the garden, you know, uh, God was binging, Adam was losing. You understand that? He had dominion over everything. And God told him to rule and to rule well. Yeah. And he told him that you can, you can partake of everything. You know, God is the God of abundance. He always is. He's the God of abundance. Amen? Amen. Yeah. If you let the devil talk you into poverty, you know that's your fault. He's the God of abundance. Everything Adam would ever need was in that garden in abundance. But when he ate of the fruit, when he allowed the serpent to have his way, you know, he got the nature of the serpent. Yeah. Understand? He got the nature of the serpent. And so when we get born again, our nature changes. Yeah, amen. We get the, the nature of God. The spirit of God comes into us. Amen? amen. And, and, and he works from the inside out. So many times, you might not, you know, see things that you want to see right away. Or, or many times things can take place and then, you know, the Bible says we have to, you know, we have to hold on yeah. to the things we get in God. Let's let them slip because they can slip. Amen. But the fact remains that if you're really born again, 
There's a weakness on the inside of you. There's, there's a, 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 a still small voice, if you listen to it, that will let you know you belong to me. You belong to me. Amen. Uh, Pastor Mike told me, I, I told him uh, the night I got saved uh, in Germantown, Pennsylvania, I said, I felt like a, a thousand pounds fell off my back that I didn't even know I was carrying. And uh, Pastor Mike said, uh, my brother Richard said the same thing. He said, he had the same experience. But, but whether you have that experience or another experience, if you're born again, the weakness of God is on the inside of you. Yeah. Now, you can get so far away, you can barely hear the voice. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But if that's the case, the Word of God says, make your calling and election sure. Amen. Amen. So everybody say this with me. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The Son of the Blessed. The Son of the Blessed. My personal Lord and Savior. Is my personal Lord and Savior. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. I raised Him from the dead. I raised Him from the dead. That I might be justified. That I might be justified. That I might be right with God. That I might be right with God. And I choose to be chosen. And I choose to be chosen. And I choose to be saved. In my heart, I believe. In my heart, I believe. Jesus paid for my sin. Jesus paid for my sin. He paid the sin debt. He paid the sin debt. That I might go free. That I might go free. And with my mouth, I boldly confess. And with my mouth, I boldly confess. He is my Lord. He is my Lord. Now and forevermore. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I call upon the name of the Lord. I call upon the name of the Lord. I choose to be chosen. I choose to be chosen. I choose. To be chosen. I choose to be saved. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, um, Jesus started off with 12, kind of like the dirty dozen. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, they they you know they were always, you know, scrutinizing him and you know, he would, you know, get on them, you know, slow to believe, you know. And remember, he told the people, he said, uh, you know, uh, y'all didn't come to hear me. Y'all came for the fishes and the loaves of bread you ate yesterday. Everybody turned up for food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no fish fry like a Jesus fish fry. Hey. <laughs> and so when Jesus is getting on his disciples and, and he's letting them know that the Father sent him and, and uh, uh, he is their king. And they, they, they fully didn't understand the whole concept of him coming to die for the sins of the world. They, they really couldn't comprehend it. But after the resurrection, yeah. things were made clear. Yeah. And the 12 turned into 120. Yeah. And the 120 turned into the 5,000. And now... It is recorded that over 2.3 billion people oh, Jesus. consider themselves a follower of Christ. Amen. Yeah. Now, now that's bigger than China. That's bigger than Europe. That's bigger than China, Europe, and the United States all put together. And how did a hundred and twenty? People in an upper room who got filled with the Spirit of God, how did they in turn get that exponential number that we have now? It was all because of the resurrection. People saw Jesus. People handled Jesus. People touched Jesus. Jesus ministered to them and they went from being fearful and cowardly to ready to take on Nero and the whole Roman Empire because they had seen Jesus yeah. and it bore witness with them that he was God coming to flesh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, I'm going to forgive you of your sins. I'm going to take your sins. I'm going to take your sicknesses. I'm going to take your diseases, your abnormality, and then I'm going to get up on the third day to prove to you yeah. that I am God. Yeah. The resurrection is the proof that Jesus is Lord, Jesus is God, 
He got up from the grave with all power in his hand. And John says, if you can believe the witness of men, if you can believe that there was a Thomas Jefferson and an Abraham Lincoln, if you can believe there was a Harriet Tubman, if you can believe history as we know it, the witness of God is greater. And the The next day, 
faith, then I see Jesus coming on in and says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Romans 5 and Revelation 5 and 5. And one of the ale elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and was and which is to come, I am the Almighty. Yes. The proof of the resurrection. Hey, every time you put your date on a piece of paper, every time you put your birthday down, it's saying how many years since Jesus rose. How many years since he rose from the dead? How many years since he walked the earth and gave his life for the sins of the world and rose again so that we might be reconciled unto God? 1 Thessalonians, I'm going to finish. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 talks about how because Jesus was resurrected, you and I are going to be resurrected. Amen? Uh, when you die, you just don't stay in the casket. When you die, there's two places you go. Either you go to hell or you go to be with the Lord. You go to the presence of the Lord. And it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah. We're going to be resurrected because he was resurrected. Amen. We'll be resurrected. Amen. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes. And the Bible says it over and over again, make your calling and election sure. Be sure you say it. Be sure the witness of God is on the inside of you. Be sure that you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You believe in the history books, but the witness of God is greater. Amen. The kingdom of God has come. The king has come. And the first time he came as a lowly lamb, disrespected, came into Jerusalem, riding on a, a uh, uh, a little dog. <laughs> uh, we were talking about this last week. We said that in those days, the king had the biggest horse. Mm -hmm. Then the general, the captains of the army, they had the next biggest horse. Then, you know, there's the horse that everybody else rode on. Mm -hmm. Then there was donkeys. And Jesus came on a colt, a little dog. And he's coming into Jerusalem. Wow. And He's on this little donkey, and I'm imagining at his feet almost touching the ground. And you're thinking, how is he the king? He humbled himself. Amen? Unto death. That you and I could be exalted unto eternal life. He paid the price, the sin debt price, so that you and I could walk in the eternal life of the believer. John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I never forget I was preaching a one Sunday morning. And in the midst of me preaching, I heard the Spirit of God say, go to, uh, I had a friend of mine who got killed, I, uh, he got shot, and um, uh, I believe it was the same year I could say, but one of my best friends, I witnessed him, he got born again, and then uh, he was killed. And uh, the Spirit of God said, go tell his father if he wants to see his son, uh, that uh, he's going to have to accept me as 
Lord and Savior, just like his son did. Yeah. Now, I can't mention any names, but this man was so mean, I believe he invented cuss words. <laughs> I mean, when, 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 when my buddy said, yeah, my dad's son home, everybody was just You know, he had a pool in the back, and we all be swimming, and he said, hey, my dad's coming home before that pool clear out so quick. He was just me. And after the sun died, he was even more of me. So I knocked on the door, I'm not going to lie. I'm, 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 I'm not for real soft. I'm hoping he's not home, but the Lord told me to go, so I know he's home. Right? So I'm knocking on the door, he opens the door, he says, All right, kid. I said, Hey, how you doing? He says, uh, What brings you here? Well, I gotta spit it out. I I I I I I I I I I I said the Lord told me that if you want to see your son, you're gonna have to come and and ask him into your life. He said, How do you know I haven't already done that? I said, Cause the Lord set me up. Oh, that unction started to come in there. I remember where I was. And he said, okay. He said, okay. Now, I, I wish that I could tell you that he said, come on, pray for me right now. But he didn't. But I left there and I said, behold, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. I don't know, I just feel led today to go over salvation because, you know, you're not saved because you go to church. You're not saved because your mom's a great evangelist and, and she preaches to you. You're not saved because your dad's the deacon or the pastor or, or your grandpa or, or mama. You're saved because you asked Christ to come into your life. And if you know you asked Christ into your life, a change has come. Yes. It might not be my change, your change might not be my change, my change might not be your change, but within your heart of hearts, you know there has been a change. Yes. Yes. What the Hulk is in a change? A change yes. has come over me. Yes. He changed my life. Yes. And now I see. Yes. Yes. You know, a change comes when a great big God, almighty God, comes into your life. When he comes into your heart and the spirit of God makes residence on the inside of you, a sure enough change comes. Amen. And, and, and as the psalmist said, it's the Lord's doing and it becomes marvelous in your life. Now the devil will try to get you to be as carnal you know, as, as he wants you to be. But you know, when you really know the Lord, there's no peace in you until you're yielding. You know you're born again if you're mingling with the world. And, and it, it says that Lot was a righteous man down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. But you know what? He, he was a righteous man at the wrong place at the wrong time, but it says his righteousness proved that he was vexed. He was vexed. He, he, he was on the ground he shouldn't have been on, but he was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. When you really know the Lord, yes. and when change has really come, the Spirit of God, is uh, he's your biggest cheerleader, and he's, he's always He's always prompting you to move on. Yes, There's higher ground. Oh, yes. There's higher ground. Oh, yes. Don't stay here. There's higher ground. Yes. There's new heights. Yes. There's deeper depths. Yes. There's more for you. Yes. All that you can believe for, you can have. I am the God of more than enough. Yes. I am the El Shaddai. Yes. I am the multi-breasted yes. one. Yes. How deep do you want it? Yes. Come on. Desires of your heart. Yes. 
died for our sins, our sicknesses, our abnormalities. He, he, he took our darkness and he gave us his light. He took our sickness and he gave us his healing. He took our sins and he gave us his righteousness. He took our poverty and gave us his prosperity. He took our neediness and gave us his all sufficiency. Jesus is Lord of all. He has risen from the dead. The, the, the resurrection is the focal point of the gospel. It is the reason that we are here today worshiping the Lord. Amen. Amen. And every person has a need for salvation. Amen. I close with this. You know, Amen. I never forget I was in Africa preaching for 30 days. I was with this hot uh, soccer team. And, uh, you know, the, the soccer teams over there, uh, they were smart. They, 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 they had us play. I wasn't playing. Uh, but uh, they would play at high noon. And I remember one day it was like 102 in the shade. Wow. And boy, you should see our boys. They, they running up and down. And one time everybody got the plea and they said, Games, get in. I don't to play no soccer. <laughs> I play football, not football. And uh, I got to running around out there. And I'm, and I'm thinking, well, how am I going to preach? You know? And uh, it was just exhausting. But I said that to say, that there's a universal fear of death. Yes, it is. Everybody fears yes, what is. happens yes. after they die. Yes. But Jesus, yes. he took the sin yes. out of death. Yes. And you don't have to worry no worries. when your spirit leaves your body. Because the word of God says, absent from your body, you will be ever present with the Lord. Amen. Jesus said, you don't have to worry when you die. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'm going to put, I don't know where you live, down here. But God has a mansion waiting for you. He has eternal rest waiting for you. He is the God of your eternal salvation. And the Bible says, if you believe the witness of men, I want to I'm, I'm going to close with this. If you believe the history book, mm -hmm. the witness of God is greater than yeah, yeah. And the witness of God is that Jesus came yes. to save sinners. Yes. Amen? Amen? And we choose to be chosen yes. in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It says uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, 7 to 10, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. You know, one of the best ways to be secure in your salvation is to serve the Lord. Amen. You know, you'll learn just as much in serving as you will in reading the Bible and praying because there's, there's theory and then there's practice. Yeah. And when you put the word of God to work, it will strengthen you in light of what you have. I never forget, as a new Christian, I will go out with the evangelism team. And as I was witnessing many times to others, God would give me the answers that I needed for myself. And there was times things would come out of me and it would be by the Holy Spirit that I didn't even know before I went out with the evangelism team. But God would reveal it to me, amen, and, and, and secured me of the great salvation that he had given me. If you want to be secure in your salvation, you must serve. You just can't take in theory. You must put it to practice. And the word of God says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. In my name, they'll speak with 
with new tongues. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In my name, they will go and teach the gospel to all nations. Uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have written. Yeah. And he says, I'll be with you always. Yes. Even until the end of the world. Yeah. You will battle the validity of your salvation until you start serving God. The devil will come to you. And tell you you're not saved. You, you know, put you under condemnation. He'll oh, you know, he's the accuser of the brethren. He will accuse you of not serving God. But you know what? When you get to serving God, and God begins to prove Himself to you over and over again, you will relax in your salvation. This is funny, but I'll never forget, you know, when I first got saved, it seemed like every time they gave the invitation, I was up front. <laughs> I'd be come under it, you know. I, I must have walked the aisle 50 times right? in, the, in the first couple years that I was, you know, because, yeah. you know, it, you know I, I, was, I was running. Yeah. You know? But, you know, it came a time I didn't have to walk no more. Amen. You know, I, I know I'm born again. Yes. I know I passed from Death unto life. Yeah. Because I love the brother. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I never forget about I, before I got born again, you know, I think coming up, my mom and she came in and poured cold water on me one day. Every Sunday I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> Any time we go to church. <laughs> I threw her. I think I got some, I think I got a fever. She poured cold water on me, said the fever's gone. Let's go to church. <laughs> But you go through those stages and then it's desire, yes. discipline, yes. and delight. Yes. Yes. You desire to walk with God. Yes. And then you get to a point where you start disciplining yourself. Yes. And then you begin to delight yourself in the Lord. Yes. And things just begin to happen that you know only God could do. Yes. Church, this is the day. Yes. That the Lord has made. Yes, it is. We're going to rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Yes. Not only did Jesus die, but he rose mm. that we might be made right with God. Yes. And the word of God says, behold, now is the acceptable time. Yes. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. We're going to quote. The prayer of salvation again. I think it's about the third time. Because we need to know that we know that we know yes. that our calling and election is sure in God. Yes. And if 120 people could reproduce and now 2.3 billion people call themselves followers of Jesus Christ. Yes. Because the original 12 and then the original 120 who saw the risen Lord. We need to continue to tell men Jesus is soon to come. We need to be a witness on our job. We need, we need to be a witness everywhere we go that the truth is in. Jesus Christ. Say this with me. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is my personal Lord. Is my personal Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God. It is the power of God. Unto salvation. Unto salvation. To everyone that believes. To everyone that believes. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. Jesus is Lord of all. Jesus is Lord of all. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. He is my eternal Savior. He is my eternal Savior. I choose to be chosen. I choose to be chosen. I choose to be saved. I choose to be saved. And I know. And I know. I pass from death unto life. I pass from death unto life. Because the love of God. Because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart. Has been shed abroad in my heart. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. I called upon the name of the Lord. I called upon the name of the Lord. I. I. 
and say. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Because he's alive in me. Say, y'all, that he's 